I looked at myself and I seen that man had mashed up my tummy. It, was, it wasn't a good feeling at all. It wasn't a good feeling at all. Couldn't move, couldn't sneeze, couldn't laugh, couldn't breathe, couldn't do nothing. At this time now, there's a metal inside. So she has just been done. It was a ridiculous pain, like a different kind of pain. A different kind of pain. I'm feeling the pain of the surgeon. I have to eat. I'm have feeling it on your behalf. I have Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're welcome to this Facebook page and YouTube channel. Guys, wonder shall never end. Popular Nigeria singer, Techno Man, Afrobeat star. You guys know this guy. Techno collapse in South Africa. Hey, please, Nigerians, we all need to put our hands together and pray for this guy. The worst has happened. I will play you guys the video. I believe many of you have seen this video. And the reason of this video is... There was a time, is it not five years ago, when Techno came out to explain about his ex to us. Explain what happened to him. I will give you guys a chance to watch everything he said on this video. Because I believe, after that saw the Techno did, the doctor told him, according to what we heard at that time, that this guy just needs to be careful of his ex. But you know what? Even when this guy, was in this you know this big problem may i call it problem because yes because this guy is not act see we are seeing techno like you know the way we are seeing normal people but if you go closely you will know that this guy literally is sick he's not strong this guy have pipe inside his body techno have pipe inside his body but you know the funny part of it is that this guy keep he still take all these uh, that they are taking with that condition we just pray everything goes well with him because according to what we heard it was in south africa doing his tour in south africa what happened in red carpet this guy just collapsed and see your hold him in red carpet let me play you guys the video and at the same time play you a video where that the freeze got to interview him then he explained everything that happened to him watch this video they will come back please i beg you share this video share this video nigerians need to pray for techno because we love this guy like man we don't want anything to happen to him we don't want to hear bad news this thing happened in south africa please south africa doctor you guys just need to take care, good care of this guy, please, please, watch this video guys. wow guys that was heartbreaking that's techno you guys just saw there like what really happened you saw his hand his hand was stiff his leg was everything about him was stiff like oh god see nigerian musicians you guys need to know one thing when you guys are not sand you see these things that you guys are taking I don't know if, if that guy take it there. I don't know if he smoke anything there. I don't know. But I'm just saying it. Because this guy, Techno, is going through a lot. I understand he tried to sing because doctor told him that he need to be very careful. He need to be very careful. In This guy need, see, rest, like really rest. He just need to, you know, Take some time and you know take good care of himself you're a musician you're a singer not just a singer a writer 
So you can give yourself some time. You know, you can give yourself some time. Now look at what happened to you now. We just pray for quick recovery. We pray for quick recovery for this, our brother, Techno. Please, Nigerians, pray for this guy. Pray for him. Watch what happened here when Daddy Freeze interviewed him. See, I know many of you have seen this video. This is five years ago. After he came back from his surgery, so he went to Daddy Freeze and Daddy Freeze got to interview him. Just hear what he said here. For those of you that say, oh, no, listen to Techno. Hear from the horse's mouth what happened to him. This is the way you talk. This is gas, like, I got shit down for film because, like, I can't tell you. I, this one will just try my best to, you know, narrate it how, how best I can. I can't tell you. So, Dr. The man is asking me, are you sure the surgery is what you want? Because she explained what the surgery is to me. And what was the surgery? What did it entail? There's two of them. One is that they'll go in my, you know, where my food passes, and they'll fold it up so that when I eat, the food you know, goes down and it can come up. And she said, when you've done this, there's no going back. Once they do it, whatever happens, that's, that's it. You will never be able to bump again in your life. That would just be it. If you eat, you eat. There's nothing like bumping. And then the other one is that they put a metal inside you. They put a magnet inside you that when you eat, the magnet opens, and when you swallow, the magnet closes back. So I, I said, I want the one with the magnet. So there's a magnet inside you? Yeah. So if I put my phone there, is it? No, 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 it's not that tight. I don't know what they call it. It's like titanium steel or something. I can't really remember what it's called. But if I'm going to have to pass through a um, metal detector, you have to make a phone card. Have a card. Hi, guys, I'm Robocop. <laughs> have a card, have a card, like, that I, I go everywhere with. So I told her, I prefer this one. And she asked me, are you sure? At, at this point, I didn't care. You get mm -hmm. at this point I didn't care. At this point I just wanted to do anything. You just wanted to be well. I just, I just wanted to do literally anything. So they said there's the final scan and test I have to do again. And this this one, this one will be a myth. This particular one wasn't a myth at all. I wasn't I wasn't ready for that. So I went to this um woman. So they put this pipe through my nose, it's fat, through my nose down into my bed. Was it painful? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was painful. Down, like, really, like, push to go down, all the way down, inside, inside my bed. And they make me drink this thick liquid, and then tell you to hold it in your um, throat for 30 seconds. And as you're trying to hold it in your throat for 30 seconds, you're feeling that big wire that's already down there together. Like, it's literally gagging me. It's like tears was coming out. All that shit was coming out. It's like, there was one time I, I couldn't pull everything out. And as you're pulling it, oh my God. It was crazy. It was crazy, I promise you. And when she finished doing this, then she said that that was the first test. Now there's another test. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this one was just insane. This one is the one where they put something in my nose down my belly and I have to hold it inside for 24 hours. And I'll carry this um, little box that's attached to it. So every time I bow, I press something. Every time I eat, I have to press something of eating. Whatever action I take, I have to highlight it. When I'm about to go to bed, I put when I'm about to go to bed. When I'm bored, I put when I'm up. So I said I can't do it. Because mine, I just think this one, I nearly, I nearly literally passed out. She told me, <laughs> what can you sacrifice? For the thing you love, because like the one thing I need in my life is my voice. Without yes. my voice, I'm done. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. So I just had to mind up. Me and I were having this conversation for at least forty minutes, and she's like, "It's either you do it or you can't get the surgery." So at the end of the day, I decided to do it, and then we put that thing down. I had to carry it for twenty-four hours. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. The next day, I woke up. At this point, it was like maybe twenty-one hours because they needed it for twenty-four hours. I just went in the bathroom, just dragged it, just dragged it out. And um, my manager took it back to the hospital. So this time we just went one week now to see what the, um, the test says. Hmm. So the test came back and the woman said, I, I have, or I had rather, the highest form of reflux you could ever have, which is when I eat, I don't have to be laying down 
or sleeping. While I'm eating, while I'm standing, while I'm performing, whatever I'm doing, there's acid just constantly going up. So all that had to happen was I had to perform in Ghana, crack my voice, and the acid just went there and smashed it. You know. So at this time I was right, so it was surgery. So we waited, say two weeks, waited two weeks, and then we went ahead and, and did the surgery. And I had a, a show in Cameroon three weeks after that surgery. So it's either I go and perform in Cameroon first, or I do the surgery first. And why this Cameroon came up is because at this time, there was no money again. At this time, like, I already blew through everything. So like, I needed that Cameroon show, because that show was paying me $110,000 for that weekend. So it's either you do that surgery, or you go and do Cameroon. But I was scared, because if I do Cameroon and perform with an already irritated voice, just because I need money to balance my bills, I would end up going back to where I started from. So I went ahead and did the surgery, and I have three weeks to get fine if I have to perform in Cameroon. And the doctor that did the surgery told me I need at least two months before I can you know, go on stage, because it's your tummy, it's like, at this time, I didn't even know, you know, how bad this thing is. I just go ahead, like, just, I want to do it. So we did the surgery. They caught me. Before the Cameroon? Yeah, before the Cameroon. So they caught me in five different places. It's, the, the surgery was done by a robot. I have, I have pictures. Can you please send to me so we can? Yeah, yeah. But not pictures of them dicing me up, but I have, you know, pictures of, you know, these activities when it all happened. Mm -hmm. So I woke up. After, this is after after the surgery, and I looked at myself and I seen that man mashed up my tummy. It was it wasn't a good feeling at all. It wasn't a good feeling at all. Couldn't move, couldn't sneeze, couldn't laugh, couldn't breathe, couldn't do nothing. At this time now, there's a metal inside, so I can never eat the way I used to eat before. How I would you know, eat now? If if it was this big before, now it's it's this small. Mm. It's this small. So like I have to eat like like babies. Like little and I have to chew at least maybe like a good one minute, chew it properly so it goes down. So now So you can eat stuff like rice. Yeah. Now I'm good. Okay. Now I've gotten used to it, I found my way around it. Now I'm good. But at that point, this surgery has just been done. It was a ridiculous pain, like a different kind of pain. Different kind of pain. I'm feeling the pain of the surgery. I have to eat. I'm feeling it on your behalf. I have to. <laughs> I have to eat because of the medications. Um, you know, like they have to put you on painkillers and all that things. So to eat now is how do you eat when like this thing is so? so hmm. Nigerians, this is what Techno went through. This guy went through a lot just to get his voice balanced. This video that you guys are seeing here is five years ago with Daddy Freeze. But today in South Africa, in South Africa, this guy collapsed. God. All we just need to do is for God to, you know, restore him back. Because this is heartbreaking. We don't want anything to happen to this guy. We love this guy. This guy is trying. Is one of the musicians that is still talking about the government. You know, he does sound music about government. Techno, yes. So we don't want anything to happen to this guy. And I want to use the opportunity to talk to Nigerian musicians. If you know you guys are not that strong, you guys have iron or mentor inside of you, please mind the way you take your Ikbu Miri. Mm. Mind the way you take your Ikbu Rumiri. Because these things sometimes react to those things inside of you. When doctors said you need to be very careful, they have their reasons of saying it. So you just need to be like, literally careful. For real. We pray techno come back with his feet. We don't want anything. Like We don't want to hear any bad news. Enough. Nigeria this year alone, we've heard too much bad news from our celebrities. Junior Pop up on this year. Miss Aibu, the other man, like a lot of them this year. We don't want to hear any news like that. Please, God, take 
just take control of everything take control of techno please nigerians pray for this guy pray for him we want him back alive we don't want to hear any bad news i will rebuke bad news away from his life nigeria musician nigeria in short nigeria industry you guys just need to take good care of yourself you guys sometimes need rest i understand you guys need the money according to what he said you need the money, but money is not everything. Your life first. You put your life first. Your life important first to you. Not the money. Not the money. Because when someone bears ROIP, that money is useless. That's one thing you all need to know. So please, Nigeria, celebrities, stars, any of this, you know, anything you know you are doing in that country, you are a celebrity, take good care of yourself. Sometimes you guys need this rest. You need rest, like just take just take a break for some time. Okay? Techno, we wish you quick recovery. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I will end this video here. Please aim to share this video. I see you all do so. God bless you. See you guys on my next video. Stay safe, guys, and bye-bye.